Neonic Horror Productions presents Welcome back to Book Watchers, where the books are made up, the movies don't matter, we're listening to the audiobooks anyway. I'm your host, Jacob. And I'm... Or at least... I, I mean, I'm listening to the audiobooks, and I'm not ashamed about it. You should be. Rude. 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 I, I have you know, this book that we're talking about today, hi, it's Devin, was over... I don't even look how long with this sucker. 20 hours? Well, anyway, hi, welcome to Book Watchers. No, this is not audible. <laughs> we are not sponsored. I wish, though. Yeah, it was 19 yeah, they hours. Never got back to us. They never did. They ignored us. They full on like, mm. ignored me. But hi, welcome oh, to well. Book Watchers. And it's not, oh well. I can reach out again. Hi. Again, for the third time, look at the book watcher. Uh, I think we've, yeah, we've established. I know, we established that. Yeah. yeah, well, today. End of the description. For... Oh, sorry. Go on. Right. Pop off, sis. Yeah, so end of the description below. Do hickey, whatever, if you're on your Hi. Will be the link tree to all the fun sh- shit. From the Ani Void Productions of all the podcasts on Spotify. Of course, we're also on Apple Podcasts. And of course, YouTube. We have a video component to this podcast and like one other podcast as of right now or pending <laughs> when I get done with that one. Um, also, there'll be a link in the description to the uh, TikTok or our at for TikTok. TikTok. Good job. It's now today's episode is going to be something long. Yeah, because today uh, Devin will be talking about American Gods by Neil Gaiman. 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 I'm looking like, do I pronounce the A like an E or an A like an A? Is how do you spell it? G A I M A N, but it's pronounced G G E I. Gaiman? Gaiman? Gaiman. Gaiman? Gaiman. I think. I don't know. Neil Gaiman. Gaiman. Neil Gaiman. So yeah, Neil Gaiman wrote American Gods as well as other works like. I mean, he did the Sandman series. Um, he's done novels and stuff in the comic book world, but um, he's most notable for like American Gods, The Sandman, Stardust, Good Omens, The Graveyard Book. He's also done film stuff. Uh, he's been he's been on. Uh, he was the voice of the Crow in the Sandman show. I didn't know that, but apparently he was the Crow. Okay. Uh, but yeah, he's 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 all over the place in, in, in the entertainment world as far as um, books, comics, stars in some movies, theater, screenplays. Uh, he is born in England. He's English, British. Do you know how they be? Uh, he's been, I mean, he's been doing this stuff since 1984. So he's been in the business for quite some time. Uh, I think Sam, some of his more popular works came out from like the nineties, early two thousands. And then it's just now getting popular because they gotten screen adaptations like American mm-hmm. gods and the Sandman series. Because those uh, Sandman series was from the ninety, was from like eighty nine to ninety six, and American Gods that we're ta- that I'm talking about today was released on actually June nineteenth, twenty two, uh, not twenty twenty one. Oh my god, two uh, thousand one. So a long time ago. Yep. 
23 years ago. Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a fantasy novel, Avi, and it takes place... Well, not takes place. I mean, it takes place in, in the United States, in America. Mm -hmm. This book blends Americana fantasy as well as like modern takes of mythology and old and like deities from old mythology. It's all mixed in a little melting pot. Now, the cool thing about this book is uh, Neil decided to go on a road trip when he was writing this book. All the locations that are talked about in the book, he has actually been to. Because he purposely wanted to use real locations in the United States that he that he would they personally have been to for these for the locations for uh, this book as far as like the landmark. So he went okay. all the way from like Rock City, Tennessee, all the way over to like God, I'm trying to think of the other locations in this book to the to the far west in Nevada. So he's been all over the place. He wants large, huge road trip. Um, getting locations down for this lovely book that got also adapted into a TV series for the seasons. Mm -hmm. And so, we were unable to watch the uh, the show because where is it on stars right now? Or it is on stars. Now I was able to watch. I watched the first two seasons, and I was able to watch the part of the third because my friend bought those um seasons on his voodoo so i was watching a little bit of right. it but let me tell you the material really heavily differs from the book which i will mm -hmm. probably just sprinkle in throughout the story as i talk about it because there's a lot of big differences between this um adaptate the tv series and the Okay, so going into chapter one, we're going into chapters today. This thing has 20 chapters. It is in total, page wise, this book is probably, oh, it's actually, it's 465 pages. Okay, so this book is going to be following the character known as Shadow who is a ex convict and who is released three days early when the story begins. Um, when he gets released from said prison, cause he was in prison for a theft gone wrong. Uh, he committed a heavy crime of theft and he's the only one that got caught amongst him. So yeah. He spent the last three years in prison. And he finds, um, of course, gets out three days early, but like when he's in prison, he finds it relieving to be there. He feels free and he's kind of just, he's vibing. Like he's enjoying his time in prison. He doesn't have to worry about the outside world or anything. And he's kind of just, I mean, when you go to prison, I mean, you kind of had to make the best of it, I guess, but he's, he's having a great time. He's having, a, I mean, he's having pretty much a great time. He's. Cellmates are kind of a problem here. He's go, he goes through cellmates like he goes through or people go through water, but he has one, his uh, current cellmate that he ends with um, is a very um, interesting man. His name is Lo E, like L-O-W-K-E-Y. Very interesting fellow. Low key. Low key. That's his name. Yeah. He's oh my God. very low key. Ha, 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 ha. Very uh, original. Well, yeah, his name is, first name is Low, last name Key, and then it's Lysmith. Is his full name, is the guy's full name? And they are telling jokes to each other as, like, Shadow on his last day starts marking off. He's been marking off days that he gets to be released and upon, back into society of America. Um, he ends up getting released three days early because he was waiting for it. So originally his wife was going to come get him and he was, they're going to have a big old surprise party for him to get released and everything. But he got released three days early because his, his wife died of a car accident. 
the drop oh. right off the bat. So they decided to release him three days early because his wife died. And he's like, oh, why am I going to release three days early? He's like, oh, yeah. So uh, your wife is dead. And he's like, what? Yeah, what? you know, good behavior, community service, uh, parole, your wife is dead. Your wife uh, is dead. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, of course, he's obviously distraught by the fact that she's dead. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously. And he, she, so he also learns that he died or she died with his best friend, Robbie. Because when he got, when he was going to get out of prison, he was also, he had a job waiting for him, his best friend at his, uh, I think it was a mechanic job. And so he found out his wife died, but he also found out the only job he was going to get also, the person I was going to give him that also died in that set of car accident. So they're both in the mm -hmm. same car together when they died. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Because I sure was. Oh, yes. So with that, um, now, with this, with talking about this book, I'm not going to go over every single little itty bitsy little detail. I'm hitting the big major points of said story because otherwise we'll be here all fucking day because the novel, like I said, is very dense for the 400 pages. So we jump a bit. He goes to the funeral for his wife and he finds out that his wife had an affair with his best friend who was going to give him that job at the mechanic shop. He found out from he found out from his wife, from Rock, from his best friend's wife. Apparently, she died. Now, this is going to be very TMI. This book is very adult. It does not shy over to over certain topics of certain things. They go in detail on how she died or how they found um, them. Uh, mm -hmm. Robbie got into a car accident while Laura, Laura, yeah, Laura. Uh, was in the middle of um, giving him a fellatio. Yeah, giving him head, road head. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. They crashed and well, she apparently she bit off his uh, member as ooh. they were crashing. So his member was down her throat. Uh, well, looks like road head turned into road kill. Wow. Golf clap for that joke. Golf clap for that joke. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Robbie's best friend was also Laura's best friend. So they had the funeral. His obviously, Robbie's wife was very upset. And she went up to Laura's grave, Laura's coffin. I can't remember if the coffin was open or if it was the closed casket, because it might have been closed casket. But she was like, You are my best friend. And then she, and then she spit. At the at the dead body, she's like, "You fucking whore!" And I'm like, "Oh, there's some mm -hmm. tea here." I was like, "Damn, the drama of it all!" Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't blame her. Yeah, uh, her exactly. Ha her husband, her husband, and her best friend both died horribly in a car crash, and she found out. Oh, they're having an affair. They're having an affair, and they literally found. Her best, yeah. uh, her best friend with her husband's dick literally down her throat. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, anybody yeah. would be understandably pissed about that. So you oh, can't really yeah. blame her for that. That, that, no, that, that. that is completely fair. That is completely fair. Yeah. As Shadow has been dealing with the funeral and the fact of what the fuck am I going to do now? I don't have a place to go because my wife's dead. And I don't have a job anymore because Robbie's dead. I don't have anything. That's it for me. What the mm -hmm. fuck? He's like, I'm better off going back to jail at this point. Then he comes across an old man. A very old man that's a con man. A very mysterious con man. He goes by the name of Mr. Wednesday. A con man? <laughs> that's Yeah, that's con man's name. Mr. Wednesday. Um, for my mythological, my mythology girlies, Wednesday is a clue. If like low key wasn't a, wasn't a clue, Wednesday's another clue. So 
Uh, he decides to take up this job of being this con man's Mr. Wednesday's bodyguard. Because he's just like, I have nowhere else to go. Fuck it. Let's just do it. Because otherwise he was just going to rob a store to go back to jail. So he's like, I got nothing else going for me. Let's go. So he decides to take up this job and him and Mr. Wednesday travel across the United States. And they visit uh, Wednesday's, um, what do they call it? Acquaintances, confidants. They meet a bunch of different people along their journey. And Shadow then meets a very, well, okay. So one of the first people they meet on their little journey across the United States is named Mad Sweeney. Mad Sweeney is a ginger man. Now, in the sh I like him better. Honestly, I like him better in the show than the book because the book that make him seem like a redneck Irishman, like backwoods heaven, wife beater wearing. I'm like, I don't like that depiction of him. The TV show depiction of Mud Sweeney, love it. He's a um, Irishman that calls himself a leprechaun, but he's like six foot. I'm like. Well, in the show, he was six foot. I think in the book, he was actually a little shorter than six foot, but he is still way taller than what a than your typical image of a leprechaun. They met uh, Matt Sweeney, and he gives Shadow a gold coin after he decides to have a bar fight with Shadow because Matt Sweeney loves to fight. He's like, okay, let's... He decided just to beat uh, on Shadow, and when Shadow won, he's like, here's a gold coin. So he gets a gold coin from the leprechaun. Of course, Shadow's not catching on. He's like, this is all fucking weird, but okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Shadow then tosses said coin. Now, this is all still in the hometown where him and his wife uh, were living. Now, this is right before they leave. Shadow has the coin, but he throws it down onto his wife's grave. Or his wife's, um, yeah, grave at the funeral. When that happens, the coin brings her back to life. She becomes the walking undead because the coin like burrows uh. into her flesh and shit. She comes back to life, obviously because of the coin, but she's technically still dead. Like her body's not like, she's not like, oh my God, I'm fully healed and resurrected. No, nah, she's still like, a corpse, but she's now alive and she rem she has all her memories and shit, but she's just unfortunately a now a um, coherent moving around talking. Corpse. So uh, that causes a whole lot of problems. Because, you know, duh. Yeah. So from there, Shadow then leaves and meets and they go up to Chicago for this one. Along their journey, they take the leprechaun with them. That's when he joins them. And he's like, okay, where are we going now? And I'm pretty sure it's in Chicago. And they meet... Oh, God, how do I pronounce his name? So he meets Chernabog and the Zoira sisters, which are... Um, the audience knows... Well, know that basically they are Scandinavian gods. The Zoira sisters. Are, hmm? They're more specifically uh, Russian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they come from like uh, old Russian lore. It's like this is part of like Scandinavian lore that has Rush. That it like Russia has its own like indigenous lore similar to the, like the Scandinavian stuff. It's like, the West uh, Slavics is where mm -hmm. they come from, which is like Polish, Czech, Slavic, mm -hmm. lower Saudi Arabia, upper Saudi Arabia, which, which all used to be a good chunk of the Western part of the Soviet Union back in the day. Yeah. That, that little region right before you get to the main country of Russia. Uh, yeah. Ch Chunabog and is. The sisters, the Zoira sisters. Now, the Zoira sisters, the so Chernabog. Okay, getting back to Chernabog. Chernabog is technically a god of 
uh, evil. He represents him and his brother. So he has a brother, which he, which he kind of mm-hmm. mentions in the story. His brother's like the light, and he's the darkness. Is what they kind of uh, what they uh, what they talk about in the book. Obviously, in the in the actual mythology, there's more to it than just that. But he's the his brother's the light, and he's the shadow. Only one can put show up at one time. They kind of alternate and shit. So currently, um, I can't think of his brother's name, Bellabog. Bellabog? Bellabog? Johnny, do you know his brother's name? Is it Bellabog? Bellabog? Okay, that's what. Okay, cool. Cool. I'm pronouncing that one correct. Bellabog is currently dead. And that's his twin brother in the story. Uh, now the sisters, the Zoro sisters, uh, represent basically they're they're there's a Slavic version of the of the God the um, I want to say the Fates, but they're probably closer towards the Nords, where they could see one could see the past, one could see the present, one could see the future. Um, yeah. they're very similar to those, but each sister has a certain time of day that they show up at. One shows up at dawn, one shows up at, uh, I think, what, dusk? And the other one shows up at twilight. Uh, one's, uh, they're, yeah. they're not all up at the same time. They go in, they go in, um, God, I don't know what the, they're going rotation on who's up and who's asleep and who's doing whatever. So one of the sisters ends up giving Shadow a silver coin, which came from the moon. Or... If you're watching the show, it's like she literally gives him the moon and it takes the shape of a silver coin. And he's like, what? And of course, this dream that he had, because he was staying with them um, for, I think, like a day or two. And he thought yeah. he was having a dream of meeting the Twilight sister. Um, mm-hmm. And he gave her, she gave him the moon. And he's like, what? And he woke up and he thought this was a dream. And they realized, oh, shit, I have the so he thought he was like tripping out um from there after getting the silver coin that the sister tells him that will protect him while he goes on this journey shadow learns that wednesday is a wednesday is a day of the week right Mm -hmm. wednesday is considered Odin's day. Not too long after all that, he finds out Wednesday is Odin. Now in the show, that's something completely different. He has to find out that Wednesday is Odin this soon. In the show, he finds yeah. out Wednesday is Odin towards the, I think it's towards the end of season one or over halfway through season one, where he's dealing with, um, he meets Easter, which in the book, Easter doesn't even come into play until much, much later. And even then, she's barely there. He, you find that he finds out that Wednesday is Odin, the Norse god, quite earlier than he does in the show. Yeah. So after finding out about Wednesday being Odin, and then he re- and then he starts kind of putting everything together that all the people, all the weird people he's met so far. Mad Sweeney, Chinnabog, Zorya sisters are all obviously gods, old gods. And he learns about Odin's mission to try and gather a bunch of old gods mm-hmm. to take on these new gods, new American gods, quote unquote. And he's trying to gather um, adversaries for this war that's going to happen. So, so old gods versus new gods. Yes, all God versus new gods. And while all that with the moon and finding out about Odin, he makes a bet with Chernabog that he ends up losing. And Chernabog gets to... So basically the bet was that if... I think it was a game of checkers. And Chernabog and Shadow played a game of checkers. Shadow's like, cool, if I win... Right? If I win, you go with uh, you go with me and Wednesday, and if you win, you kill me. So he, all, he basically he offers up himself, his head, in this game to Chernabog. 
He's like, cool. If I lose, you could take you could take a hammer, your hammer to my face, to my skull, crack it open like an egg. He ends up losing, and Chernabog uh, agrees to go with Wednesday, do what Wednesday wants to do. But at the end of it all, he'll take a hammer to Skyle's face at the very end of it. After it's all said and done, he'll die okay. by Chernabog's hand. Chernabog agrees. The sisters obviously um, will hold the fort as Chernabog leaves. As well with um, Wednesday. Oh, okay. So I did forget. I did miss something. Now, back when he was still at home in his hometown before. But Matt Sweeney Wednesday. He did come across uh, what he'll soon to be known. Soon to know as the uh, one of the new gods. Um, a young man uh, caught. Um, captured Shadow. To relay a message that. Um, to tell when basically to tell Wednesday that he is and I quote dumpster of history mm -hmm. and their goal is to re and I quote reprogram reality. So he's technically already met one of them before, but he just didn't know that they were the new quote unquote, the new gods. Mm hmm. And that's another thing with that young man. That young man is considered techno boy. He is the te he's the technology deity of the new gods okay. in the show. They make him look like a very w rich white boy, uh, skinny, freaking full of himself. In the show, it's quite the opposite. In the show, he's very overweight. He's very ugly. They don't, they make him more attractive in the show, and he's very just unseemly. He's mm -hmm. not very attractive in any way. Granted, in the show, he's not really either, but they didn't make him a big boy. Because he's yeah. like really heavy set, almost like a fucking like Humpty Dumpty. Not Humpty Dumpty. Freaking um, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. That was the imagery I got from the description of Techno Boy, Technological Boy. The Tweedledee. Okay. What? So very dopey looking. Yeah. Is. Basically, like if someone spent their whole life on a, at a computer, they didn't leave it. They just ate, drank, lived their life at a computer, and didn't bother going outside. That's what you look like. Look like one of those people that lived at internet cafes and shit. Okay, cool. So as we continue on the story with um, Chernobog, this is the bad. Gonna get his head blown up. Head, his brains plowed into the ground when all this is said and done finds out odin gods new gods all that kind of shit uh shadow is not take is kind of like weirded out by all this and obviously he's like a computer processing all this all this information at once so he's just mm -hmm. he's just living his life as a human and then he's getting thrown into this mess so he leaves the house um well, of course, one of the Zoyras, um, one of the sisters says their goodbyes mm -hmm. to Wednesday and Shadow as they leave. Um, of course, Shadow does have that coin from the day from the night before, from that dream he had in his hand. Mm -hmm. And of course he flip the leaves with Wednesday. From there, they decide to there's a cool little history lesson in this because sometimes you get little little tidbits from Wednesday. And one of my favorite ones was this one that happened right after they left uh, Zoira. Wednesday talks about Lady Liberty. Yeah. How Lady Liberty is is a technically a foreigner. And how we as Ameri as Americans put Lady Liberty as a symbol for quote unquote freedom. And he says, and I quote, Liberty is a bitch who must be betting on a mattress of corpses. And I'm like, damn. Wow. I mean, that's America for you. So, I mean. Hmm. Yeah. And I was like, that's interesting. So technically, Lady Liberty is a old deity as well in a weird way. He doesn't really go much in detail after that. He just says that little comment. And I'm like, damn. 
That's intense. So then our Wednesday takes Shadow to a bank, which they eventually rob. Or Wednesday robs later. So they go and scope out the place and devise a plan and they come back later to rob said. Now, of course, Odin is also a god of wisdom, luck. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they rob the bank. They don't get caught, but they rob it because Odin's like, we need money. We need money to get places, so let's get the money. <laughs> and when, and Shadow's like, I'm not going back to jail. I'm not doing it. I'm not going back to jail. And when's like, you're fine. We won't get caught. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, did you hear that? I did. Uh, I did hear that. Oh my god. That was loud. Not really loud, but... Wait, do I want to go over? So now they rob the bank. And they... Because they ask... They go through a whole... Freaking ruse on how um, Odin robs his brain. It's like a whole process. He gets checks from the teller. He drops. He's like, oh, can I drop off Jack Slayer? Blah, blah, blah. And he just goes through this whole ruse and whole diabolical plan that makes no fucking sense while reading it. And at the very end, it's like he puts it all together. He's like, all this plan. See, all this will work out in the end. And it does for him because that's just how Odin works. Yeah. Um, when they get all the money they decided to piece the fuck out wednesday gets shadow a new identity new identity new papers the whole works yeah wow. and from there they go on their journey through um the rest of america as they try to gather more of wednesday's allies including mr nancy who is actually a God of stories, wisdom, and knowledge, and trickery from African lore. He's the spider god, Mr. Nancy. He also tries to gather Easter, uh, who's a, or Astara, as she's known. She's a goddess, a fertility from the Germanic, old Germanic uh, mythology. Now, of course, Easter is still technically... So the whole idea of the god, old gods and new gods is the fact that the old gods are not getting the worship they used to get. Well, obviously the new gods are. And some of the old gods are aligning themselves with the new ones to get that praise where they could still be, be relevant to the um, yeah. world in the current day. Easter is one of those gods that's still being worshipped indirectly... Because Easter, the holiday, now for those religious folks out there, if you're listening to this to this episode, um, hate to break the news to you, Easter holiday is not a Christian holiday originally. It's readapted from a holiday surrounded by a star. For it was a holiday, a pagan holiday in the spring that celebrated fertility and rebirth, and technically. They readapted that holiday for the Christian holiday that we have today, but Astara is still technically getting worshipped indirectly through the skies of Jesus Christ and that story with Easter. But she's still mm -hmm. kind of relevant in a weird third party kind of way. She's not, they're not like worshipping Astara, but she's like, cool, I'll take the power. Why well, take what I can get? And they go more into it's that rising. with the show itself rather than the book. Because in the book, yeah, she's kind of just there. Well, improvise, adapt, overcome. Exactly. They also meet a guy named Whiskey Jack, which he is not in the show. Whiskey Jack is... God. How do I even describe Whiskey Jack? Now, Whiskey Jack is, oh, he is, I'm assuming he is from tribal mythology, so from one, some of the tribe, uh, tribal mythology, some of the native tribes. Uh, he's depicted as a crane or a bird of some kind, depending on the tribe. 
And he is a... He's also the one supposedly responsible for the Great Flood in old native tri tribal stories. Okay. Which you, which is kind of funny how the Great Flood, how a lot of mythology, some of the really older ones, also do have a Great Flood that ended the world, that destroyed Judea, the world. Christian Judea. That, like and Christian there's like Judaism, other ones before it. And, and then there's Greek... Uh, they have their own, and I've heard I've heard like the Native American mythology once before, but I, didn't, I wasn't sure if it was credible because I read it in another. Uh, it was in the Twilight books of all things. Yeah, Which there's why a, I didn't really put much. No, yeah, there. Yeah, there's a bunch of uh, this deity is a a god of, of from like several different tribes. Has he has many different names. But in their creation story, how they explain the animals in the geographical locations, saying that he is responsible for causing the flood on the earth. So it's like, I found mm -hmm. that interesting. But yeah, Whiskey Jack is one of the lesser known gods that you that you see in this story, because you would have I had to look him up, be like, who the hell is that? Who is mm -hmm. Whiskey Jack? So I had to look that one up. And then of course you got John uh Chapman. Who is AKA Johnny Appleseed? Mm -hmm. Yes, Johnny Appleseed, ladies and gentlemen, is technically American mythology, but he's also a real person. So it's weird. That one's that one gets a little um Yeah, Johnny Appleseed. John Chapman. Some of the many characters that he comes across on their journeys. The new gods, of course, consist of the internet, which would be technological mm -hmm. boy, media, who media, her persona, she changes her appearance depending on the, um, the, like she changes appearance from I Love Lucy to like in the show, David Bowie to, I think in season two of the, of the American God series, they, she turned into like a K-pop star, like K-pop influencer. And she changes her appearance pretty oddly throughout the mm -hmm. story to kind of reflect the ever-changing form of media in the United States and the New World. And they're all led by a guy named Mr. World. That is the head of that. Now. So the new gods abduct Shadow again amongst their journey because he gets abducted by them a lot by sh by a group of shadowy men in black that they call the Spooks. And the Spooks have weird names like Mr. Wood, Mr. Stone, Mr. House. It's all like Mr. Mr. and then it's something. And it, what I can correlate to, and they don't really explain it that much in the book, but like Mr. Stone, Mr. Wood, um, they kind of give you a little, give you a hint that these were old gods that signed up with the new gods and they got like a new name, Mr. Wood, Mr. Stone, whatever have it may be. And they're just nothing more than goons for the new gods. But they somehow, okay. but they keep relevancy in a different way than the normal way of how a god would get worshipped and shit. So, uh, Shadow gets abducted again by the Spooks, led by, of course, Mr. World, who is the big cheese. Laura rescues him, his dead wife, who got resurrected. She rescues mm -hmm. him, killing off a bunch of Spooks, because she apparently has superpowers now. Super strength, durability. And Wednesday tells him to hide from there when he escapes... Cause she kind of just saves and then she pieces out. And then Wednesday's like, yeah, you need to go hide with, um, Mr. Oh God, Mr. Jackal and Mr. Ibis, which is Mr. Ibis is, uh, oh. off and Jackal is Anubis. Respectful. Mm -hmm. Which of course, Anubis, for those of you who don't know, is a God of, uh, for, um, funeral rites, Graves, protector of graves, and guide to the underworld, which is Anubis, and then 
Thoth is a god, an Egyptian god of knowledge and wisdom. Yes. That's about to say it. Knowledge, wisdom, writing, hieroglyphic, science, magic, art, and judgment. And those two run a funeral home together. <laughs> I find it adorable. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense for Anubis, but yeah. Toth? Toth, yeah. 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 They run a funeral parlor in Cairo, Illinois. Which is a real city or town in, Ky in Illinois named Cairo. So Sweeney, the leprechaun, uh, Bay is, he kind of, he ventured off among their journey and he kind of just, he's not as much in the book around like he is in the show. Cause in the show he's around quite a bit, but in the book, he kind of venture, he splits off for a while. Cause he kind of gets tired of Wednesday and how he's like, when Odin's manipulating everything, blah, 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 blah. And he ventures out, he's like, fuck y'all and pieces out. But he ends up popping up again at the funeral home while shadows and uh, hiding out and he begs for his coin back because he gave the wrong coin to shadow. He was supposed oh. to give shadow a normal gold coin, but the coin that he gave shadow was very important to him because he owed somebody that. Ooh. Yeah. He owed somebody that coin. And he gave, yeah, he gave him the, uh, accidentally gave him the wrong coin and it held that particular coin. They gave shadow held all, all held all his luck as well. So he was not lucky this whole time without having that coin. His life was complete shit. Anything bad that could happen did happen to Sweeney, Mad Sweeney. And he's begging for the coin, but he's like, give it back to me. I need it. And Shadow, that he doesn't have the coin anymore. Because he put the, because he gave the coin, put it in his wife's grave, and the coin sitting in his wife's chest. Grave. So he's like, I don't have it, bro. And Sweeney gets very upset. And he storms off. He's, he doesn't, he's. Matt Sweeney in the book is kind of sad. It's kind of depressing because he is a desperate man that wants his, that wants his luck back as a leprechaun. I was like, he talks like that's all he has in life. It's just that and he lost mm -hmm. it. So he goes, he storms off and they do find him later, but they find him dead. Uh Oh yeah. Sweeney died. I was very upset because in the show, and the show, I think he does die, but he doesn't die till much, much later because he's in the series a lot more. But yes, Sweeney dies. And he had a full, he had a whole funeral and everything too. And they're like, what? So he, unfortunately, he deceased. Um, then he used to be a king. Yeah, it was kind of depressing because they were when they found his body, he was I think on the side of the road. He had like a bottle in his hand. Like he, I think he drunk he either drunk himself, he died of um. I don't remember how he died. Exactly. Because I don't think anyone, I don't think he anyone came up to him and just killed him. But hold up, future demon cuts part out, Johnny. How did, how did Matt Sweeney die in the book? Did he die with just like a bottle on the side of him? And he just basically drank himself to death or did he? Cause I don't think anyone killed him. I think he just died cause he was just unlucky. He just kind of just drank himself. I think. I'll go with that. <laughs> Either way, his, his death was very depressing. And yeah. I was very sad. Cause Matt Sweeney's one of my favorite characters in this book. Yeah, yeah, he freezes to death, so he dies a very, uh -oh. very depressing death. Freezes to death, freezes to death out in the cold, which kind of goes shows how how his luck was just not on his side anymore. And they found him dead a while later after he stormed off. Um, they his body was tended to by of course Anubis and Thoth, 
and they put him up down. And they kind of talk about how they, it's like, well, there's another one of us gone, another old god gone to the world, and the world never knew. Mm-hmm. On and then from there, other stuff happens. But of course, Shadow relocates again from Cairo. It re- relocates to Lakeside. Lakeside in this town, what in Wisconsin. Shadow picks up a hitchhiker on the way named Samantha Black Crow. As he's traveling up to Lakeside, because Wednesday sent him there. He's like, mm-hmm. you need a hideout. So we're going to send you to a faraway place that we make it real difficult to find you. So you're going to go to this random fucking place in the middle of fucking nowhere in Wisconsin. Lakeside. You have a house. You have your name. You have a job. You, you got money. Live there for Hide out. So that's what he did. He went to go hide out. Picked up a girl on the way up there, Samantha, and he drops her off at her house. And then he continues on into Lakeside. And once he gets there, um, he hides out under the alias Mike Ansel. Is his alias while he's spending a lot of his time in Lakeside. Mike Ansel, he spends his time with several lakeside residents, um, including a elderly man that introduces him, the well, introduces himself to him when he first comes into the town, as well as he pops up pretty oddly throughout his time there. His name is Hanselman. Hanselman. Yeah, Hanselman. And of course, he meets mm-hmm. the sheriff of the town, a local reporter. And they live a very simple little life. It's not a lot going on there. It's pretty much, here's a lake, there's a town. Everyone minds their own business, keeps very quiet. He's, he's just there to hide out. Yeah. Now, when... When Shadow decides to dig in a little more into Lakeside, because there is some... Ooky spooky shit happening there. Henselman then uh, along this journey as he's finding out that there that Lakeside is not all that's cracked up to be. There's some there's some shit brewing. He finds out that Lakeside has a tradition of taking a car onto the ice belt, the ice and belt on onto the ice and belt on when it falls. Okay. So they have a tradition in Lakeside where they take a car out on the ice and it's a way for them to tell that because people walk across the the frozen lake. So they put a car on there and when it's cars, when the ice thaws out, the car will obviously sink into the lake. And that's when they'll know, okay, cool. We don't go walk on the ice if the car falls. It's a way to keep, it's a way to tell if it's safe to walk on the ice or not. So they have that weird ass tradition here, there in Lakeside. And Wednesday throughout all this periodically takes Shadow on jobs, meet the meet old gods throughout. So he comes and goes. Um, they are pursued while, all while by the spooks during all this. He is uh, by one of them. One of the big ones that pursues him is known as Mr. Town who um, blames Shadow for the death of his friends. And I think one, I think his friends were like Mr. Wood and Mr. Stone. Basically, he Mr. Town blames Shadow for the death of those friends of his. But in reality, Shadow didn't kill them. His wife did, who's an undead super being. She's over there killing people. And she killed them, not him. But Mr. Town blames Shadow for that. During all the fiasco. So Mr. Town has a vendetta where it's like it's on site. So when Shadow comes back after several of those missions, one and during one of the in between all that, he catches word that a teenager in Lakeside has gone missing. And he joins the rest of the town folk as he tries to find um uh, this teenage girl. He learns that another teenage girl in the town have also has also gone missing like this is a trend this per this teenager that went missing is not the first it's one of many 
over the course of the last several years that um, in this town that teenagers and kids go missing. So he's trying to solve this uh, murder case that's happening while all this is while he's also dealing with Wednesday and his bullshit. He's then arrested for breaking his parole. And they kind of assume that he might be responsible for the missing teenager. Well, at least this particular recent one. They arrest him when they find out who he really is. But he does escape with the help of Trinabog and Mr. Nancy. So they come in, they get him the fuck out. Like, cool, we're getting you the fuck out of here. So he finds out that the girl that, the teenage girl that went missing this time around was the one he drove. Samantha. The one he drove, he lift, he gave a lift to when he was coming into town. But he dropped her right in front of her house. And then she went missing. And then they mm -hmm. found her at the bottom of the lake. That's suspicious. That is suspicious. So the new gods and the old gods are getting ready for war, Avi. And they're getting ready for war in a city known as Rock City. Rock City, Tennessee. If you have not been there, please do yourself a favor. Go up there. It's quite nice. It's a city. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it's rock city. So there's rocks, caves. It's at the top of, um, God. It's up in the Appalachian mountains or Appalachian mountains in Tennessee. Yep. And it's a nice little place where you can see cave systems, rock, nice rocks and shit. There's a reason why they call it rock city. It's a bunch of rocks up there, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, I, I've been there. I've been there since I was a child when I lived in Tennessee, but it was great. Sounds like Rock City. <gasps> I've been there. Wow. Yeah. I've been there. Okay. Rock City. All right. That's weird. So apparently Rock wow, City has a. So apparently Rock City has a very, has a important connection to the gods. And that's almost kind of like an. Um, I'm trying to remember how they described it. It's a place where the gods could go to have their battle because. They don't, they will not, they don't have their battle on earth per se. They have it in like a different realm almost. If that makes sense. Like an astro, like kind of like an astro plane in a way. Cause they don't, they don't literally go in God mode and fight on earth. I'm trying to make it make sense, but it's, it's, it's a lot more confusing <laughs> I'm not doing so a very they, good job at explaining it. So it's a place for them to basically be able to just go all out without yeah. doing any like kind of like irreparable damage to yes. the world. Yes. And all these old gods are coming into the fray as well. And of course, all these new gods are coming in. It's becoming a war zone on both sides. You get this is during the part of the story where you get a bunch of little appearances of old, of other old gods that they give names to, or they give descriptions to, and you're kind of like, that seems familiar. Like, they have a lot of real interesting ones. Granted, they're like cameos, so they're not necessarily mm -hmm. important, but if and when y'all read the book, you're going to be looking at some of those descriptions. You're like, huh, who's that? Hmm. Who's that? Or you're like, oh my God, I know who that is. There's a lot of that because everybody's pulling up, pulling up for the war. Um, by rock, by the time Rock City happens, mm -hmm. Wednesday was captured by the new gods and he was murdered. Oh, uh huh. They killed, they killed Odin. The new gods killed Odin. And that's what started this. That's what the war was going to happen anyway. But the fact that they killed Wednesday sent everyone into a frenzy. And everyone's like, cool, we're yeah. all going to Roxy. We're going to fuck shit up. Y'all going to fucking die. So that's what started. That's what really put the fire under the old gods asses is that they killed Odin. The one per the one God that was trying to rally everybody up to fight off the new gods like stab stab deceased so as everyone's rallying up for the war wednesday's body is um 
retrieved back by Shadow, and he's a surprise to discover that his old prison cellmate and mentor, uh, Low Key, is working as a driver for the new gods. Oh God, that's suspicious. Yeah. Right? Of course, of course, Low Key would do it. I mean, his name is Low. I don't know who you're talking about. Who's this Loki? Let's not play around. <laughs> we know we all know who that is. I didn't I never knew who that was. I never knew who that was. What? Never. Mm-hmm. So Low I've is never read the book. <laughs> and I know exactly who that is. Yeah, it's Loki. It's Loki. Mm-hmm. So Low is a driver for the new gods, and he comes across Shadow. He's like, oh you. And Shadow is, of course, yeah, he sees Loki, or Lo, and he's just like, "Who? why the fuck are you here? And he's like, I'm just hired for a job. Loki's like, I'm just minding my own business. Oh, don't look at me. You don't know me. What? You don't know me? It, 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 was, pre- it was pretty funny. Because he was like, what is he doing here? Because I, I already knew that Low that Loki was Loki for Norse mythology, mm-hmm. but I it's kind of funny. What? Loki who? Huh? Huh? What? I don't know you. Huh? And even though Shadow is dead, not Shadow. Oh, Wednesday is dead. Shadow is still bound by the contract he made with Wednesday. At did all of this to hold his. So backtrack a little bit. When Loki, not Loki, when when before Wednesday died. Shadow and Wednesday made a blood pack. Blood pack? No, the blood. No, they drank. To, they drank to it. They did the old-fashioned yeah. way that drink. They made a deal and they drank to it. And the deal was to do for Shadow to do Wednesday's uh, vigil by reenacting Odin's time hanging from the world tree. So, Ooh. if you all don't know Norse mythology, Odin. Spent some time. Um, this is where he lost his eye. Yes, this is where he lost his eye. He was mm-hmm. in. Um, so there's a story of Odin, how he lost his eye. He became all powerful and shit. He basically was hanging from the world tree for a very, very long, significant amount of time. He was also not a significant amount of time, but like nine days, but nine days with a spear in your side, it's a lot. So Shadow is supposed to hang, reenact, basically he's do his vigil, is to hang from the world tree with a spear in his side, like Odin did for nine days. And he's supposed to do it for nine days. And granted, Shadow's mortal. So he's like, I'm a everyone around him is like, no, you're not doing it. We'll have someone else do it, someone that will live. Cause you do it, you're gonna die. And Shadow's like, no, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna fucking do it. So he does it. Let me let, let me tell you something. By this point, he go Shadow goes from love to hate when hating Wednesday throughout this whole story. Because Wednesday is a bitch. He's a bitch. He's a big bitch. But Shadow has a weird, weird relationship with Wednesday. And he's like, I said I was going to do it, so I'm going to do it. And Wednesday's went over and beyond for Shadow countless times as well. So he's like, I owe Wednesday that to do that. So during those nine days, when he's hanging from that tree, from that world tree, as the war is happening in Rock City, during those nine days, he is visited by Horus. And for those of you who don't know, Horus is an Egyptian god, and he's an Egyptian god of kingship, healing, protection, the sun, and the sky. Mm-hmm. But Horus is not. He has long gone mad, and now he's just a bird. He's a hawk, permanently. Because they describe, they talk about how if they if the gods stay in their animal form for too long, they get stuck. Horus obviously got stuck. 
So Horus is now just a hawk flying around. And they do this, and he's kind of a weird... So in Norse mythology, you got the world tree. You got the squirrel, you got the dragon, you got the serpent. But there's also a bird that... A hawk? Falcon? There's a bird, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not tripping, right? There's a bird in, in the, with the world that lives in the world tree? Yeah, there's a eagle. Yes, yeah, an eagle. So Horus is supposed to represent the eagle in the world tree. And I'm like, that's interesting. I like what they did there with that. Kind of merging in the mythologies a little bit. Mm -hmm. So Horus is there and he lives his life as a hawk, basically. Shadow then, during the course of those nine days, dies, unfortunately. And he mm -hmm. visits the land of the dead, where he is then judged by Anubis. As you do. Mm -hmm. Shadow then learns that during this, when he's being judged by Anubis, he learns that um, sir, you're not just a mortal. No, 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 no. You are the son of Odin. You are Wednesday's son. Oh, God. He is a demigod, technically. Oh, my God. So he finds out that he is the son of Odin. And he's like, what? And he's part of the deity's plans. All of this was planned to happen. Odin to die was Shadow doing this vigil of nine days off the world tree and dying and then being finding out all this and in hopes to possibly get his godly powers bring him back to life and shit that was planned. Everything to this point was fabricated and planned by Wednesday. The war, everything. And I'm like, hmm? T? T. So Wednesday Finding out that Odin is the one that started all of this, wanted to bring the war, the new gods and the old gods together for getting Shadow, purposely getting with a woman to have Shadow be born. All of this, Loki being there in Shadow's cell as a cellmate, everything was fabricated and planned by Odin. Odin plays the fucking long game. Here. He plays the long game. So he is being judged by Anubis, finds all this out, and he finds out that he is that he is part of this god's plans. During all this time, Mr. Town arrives at, at said world tree, and he's ordered by Mr. Mr. World to cut down the world tree. And I'm like, what? Cut it down, but shadows on it. What? The fuck? Horus then decides to go out and find Easter. This is where Easter comes into play more. And mm -hmm. he convinces her to bring Shadow back to life. Shadow then realizes that Mr. World is low. Key. Yeah, my face too. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Loki is Mr. World. All right. Yeah, right. And Odin and Loki have been playing two con, a two, a two man con. They've been conning both sides. Oh my God. Odin and Loki have been conning the old gods and the new gods for a war. And the idea was the orchestrated shadows birth, his meeting of Loki in disguise in prison, even Laura's de his wife's death, all fabricated. Loki had arranged for Odin's death, thus making the battle between the new and old gods a sacrifice to Odin, restoring Odin's power, while also allowing Loki to feed off the chaos of the battle. So their whole goal was to get their godlike powers back, have all the gods kill each other, have it be a sacrifice to the great Odin, and then Loki get that power from just the pure chaos that's happening during the battle. So both of them, regardless of who wins and who loses, they're both going to come out on top. Because they wanted that power back. I was like, you diabolical bitches. Ah, oh, I was shooketh. Shooketh. So, as all this is starting to come to light, Shadow arrives at Rock City after he's brought back to life by Easter, of course. 
and he confronts Loki. Now gravely wounded and the ghost of Odin, Loki, now gravely wounded with the ghost of Odin, who reveals their plans, Avi, Shadow travels to the site of said battle that's happening right now between the old gods and new gods, and he explains to both sides that they have nothing to gain from all this, and that Loki and Odin are playing all of them bitches, and they're, they're going to be the true winners of the battle, of the war, and all of them are just chess pieces in a very long game. Long haul game. Wow. Like, damn. Y'all some bitches. Y'all got play like motherfuckers. <laughs> it was great. I was like, ah, drag him. Drag them. Mm. So Shadow then. That Shadow tells the gods basically, now this is a terrible place. Don't don't be here. It's a bad place. It's a bad place for gods. And he's like, yeah, go back to your homelands. Go. You're better off going back home. Better off going back home. This is a godless land here. Go home, bro. So all the gods depart and they go back to their homelands. Instead of staying in the, stay, instead of staying in the United States. And Loki dies. Odin's ghost fades. Laura then asks Shadow to take the coin from her. And when he does take the coin from her body, she dies. She is finally mm. dead, dead. Not like partially dead, but like dead, dead. Takes the coin. And then he rests. He goes back in, uh, with Mr. Nancy. And he rests uh, at the at the uh, funeral parlor. And then Shadow has a dream of the god Ganesha, which is from Hindu, mm -hmm. in the Hindu religion. Ganesha tells him to look in his trunk. Look in the trunk. Well, not looks, not, okay, not, when I first, okay, when I first heard that, I was like, look in his trunk, and I'm like, no, wait, he said, look in the trunk. And I'm like, what do you mean the trunk? Like, what? So, Shadow wakes up, and he, re and he goes back to Lakeside. And he walks yeah. onto the thin ice towards the car resting there because like said tradition, he goes up to the car, opens the trunk. And what does he find? The child's body, the, the body of the child that went missing. And it kind of comes to light. That all the cars at the bottom of the bottom of the lake, in every single trunk, a child of the town. And, he's, and that comes to light, and uh, he finds out that Henselman, the elderly man that he's been quite friendly with as he's been in Lakeside, kind of showing him around town, he spent Christmas with them, the whole works. Uh, the man that he's been friendly with, turns out he's a deity. He's a god. Uh, he is a He's the god responsible for kidnapping children and killing them. Now, he is known as a kobold in uh, mythology of northern Germany. Okay. He is basically a little guy. Like, uh, from what they... Kobold's not a dragon... Not a little dragon guy, goblin thing from D and D. A kobold's like a, he's almost like a little gremlin, like a little goblin, like a take on a goblin. So, Henselman is taking these children, killing them as sacrifices to himself, and that's how he's stayed alive for so long because all those deaths are sacrifices for him. Okay. And Henselman explains that he regrettably must take one child as a sacrifice each year in exchange for the town's um, prosperity. And I'm like, that's that seems sus, but okay. Mm -hmm. The town folk, of course, are unaware of all this that's happening. They just assume children are going missing, and they are unaware that he that Henselman is in control of the town at the end of the day. So he finds out um, yeah, they're unaware of the town, sacrificing. Shadow then kills him. 
well, he thinks of killing him, but he finds that he cannot kill Henselman. He saved his life. Can't kill him. He saved his life. However, the sheriff, <laughs> the sheriff, on the other hand, overhears this whole conversation and open fires on Henselman. Oh. The cop's like, ah, mm, Papa, I can't, Papa, and kills him. Shadow and the sheriff drive off. The sheriff guilty to the point of taking his own life. He feels so bad for killing him. Because Henselman, you see, overhears the conversation and he just reacts. So he just kills him. Not really thinking about it. He just reacts. Um, Shadow then um, cre uh, considers this a fail save created by Henselman so that whoever killed him would soon die after. So it's almost like a fail save. So the fact that he killed him, he, th he was going to drive the sheriff mad to the point where he was on that. It's like a fail save. So he were to die, he would take someone with him. Or they'd be, bl or they'd be the one blamed for the deaths of the kids. Either way, it's a fail save to make sure that he... Comes out on top. Yeah. And I'm assuming also that if he kills himself because he killed Henselman, wouldn't that be a death in his in his name? Would that bring him back? Cause so Shadow with use and now that Shadow's a god or a demigod, he uses magic to change the sheriff's memory of overhearing him and the killing of the goblin, the kobold. Yeah. Uh, he leaves the, he leaves the sheriff and lakeside behind. And he kind of just like the problem solved, you know, he, he also understands that the town's prosperity will likely wither away without Hizzleman's protection. So the fate of the town, basically shadow killed the guy. And it's like, well, Whatever happens to the town happens to the town now. Oh, well, I, mean, I can't do it. Like, I can't do anything about it. Enzelman's dead. So now the town's just got to fend for itself and hopefully they stick around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so from there, uh, this is towards the end of the book. S Shadow goes to Iceland and he comes across another incarnation of Odin. This incarnation of Odin uh, is created by the beliefs of the original settlers of Iceland. Oh, okay. Now, this Odin is more of the wise man, not the con man. So he's okay. more of the wise old man. And he is much closer to this uh, Wednesday, to this particular Odin, than the original. Shadow confronts Odin on Wednesday's actions or Odin of Wednesday's actions, but Odin reports, he's like, and I quote, he was me. Yes, but I'm not him. That they're the same. Different. Ah. So this iteration two of, sides of this. Yeah. Two sides of the uh, same coin. Yeah, you're right. He indicates that that Wednesday was part of him that went with his followers when they traveled to the new world and became corrupted as he gradually was forgotten. Yeah. He became that greedy man as everyone was forgetting about, about Oda. Uh, Shadow gives this Odin Wednesday's glass eye. Now this is the eye that Odin lost technically to the world. When he did the whole world tree fiasco, he lost his eye mm -hmm. to gain wisdom and he repl and Wednesday replaced it with a glass eye. So he gave Odin, this new Odin, Wednesday's glass eye, which Odin places in a leather bag for as a keepsake. Shadow then performs a single-handed coin trick, which he learned from Mad Sweeney, because he's been doing mm -hmm. coin tricks throughout the whole fucking story. He, he became a little obsessed with coin tricks, and he learned quite a few of them because he had a whole fascination with the coin Matt's when he's coin to that coin that was the moon and all that kind of fun shit. Okay. 
From there, Shadow then um, performs a piece of real magic, putting a gold coin from nowhere, from pulling a gold coin from nowhere like Mad Sweeney. Because when they first fought, Mad Sweeney told him, hey, I will teach you how to grab a coin from nothing. A taught Shadow, but Shadow, it's almost like that little piece of memory that uh, Mad Sweeney taught him that disappeared. Mm -hmm. But he remembers how that, how he does that now. So Shadow pulls a coin out of thin air, like Mad Sweeney. And then he flips the coin up in the air and then walks away. And the coin lands and you kind of just left to wonder if the coin will ever come back down. So he kind of just flips it and then walks off. And that's the end of the story of American Gods. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the story's fucking good. It's a lot. The show is nothing like it in some ways. Like, for example, in the show, you get a god you get the goddess of love, love, uh, which is not this particular goddess of love was not Aphrodite, it was Queen Sheba in the Bible. Mm -hmm. She is in the book, but in the book they kill her. And the way mm -hmm. they kill her is very fucked up. So of course she's a uh, sex worker during in this story, and basically, if I remember correctly, I think it was the Techno Boy. Was he a Techno Boy or one of the other gods, one of the newer gods? But she's on she's on the street and she's walking up the street or whatnot, doing her thing, and they come by to shoot her, and then drive off, and she's left on the floor dying. And I'm just like, that's fucked. Cause she wasn't that big of a part in the store in the actual like book, but in the show, she has a much mm -hmm. bigger role and you get to learn more about her in the actual show than the book. Cause the book, she's just there. And like in the in-between stories, cause the American gods in between each chapter, they have like a little segment in the beginning of the next chapter that talks about another God or another deity that's somewhere in America. And one of those little mm -hmm. stories that doesn't really correlate to the overall plot was hers. And they kind of yeah. mention her and then she dies later on. Kind of just off hilter. And I'm like, damn, that sucks. I was kind of upset about that too. Yes. Very sad. Anyway. Um, one of her first stories though is about her having sex with a man. This uh -huh. is gonna get this is gonna get royal TMI. So have you watched you haven't watched the show, right? Mm -mm. So she, the show kind of does the same thing as the book did as far as like her first appearance. She has relations with a man or having sex okay. and he is really she's intoxicating in a way. I mean, she's a, she's a goddess of love and fertility, so she's very intoxicating and she's like, worship me. Worship my body. And he does obviously. But then she gets larger and she puts this guy's body in her. Um... Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. She devours him in a uh, another way. And he. Gets absorbed into her and he's like floating. They describe like he's floating in the cosmos in like an egg space thing. And he kind of just absorbed uh -huh. into her. And he's never seen again after. Like he died. Like she, like she, that's her sacrifice. He took, she took him and she, you're part of me now. Yeah. It's a lot. It's very descriptive. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. And the show shows everything of that too. And I was like, oh, I love the, first off, I love the energy, em the imagery of it all. It's lit. It's cool. It's weird. It's very weird. Then there's another in between story about a djinn, which djinns are genies, demons, depending on which lore you look at as far as the um, pre Islamic lore. Yeah. There's a djinn running around New York and there's a businessman. Um, basically, gay sex happens between this man and the djinn. What's interesting about the Jen, because they do this again, they do the same thing in the show too, because the Jen, that's Jen's story shows up too. 
where this businessman is there to sell trinkets and he's not doing so hot and he's having a rough time and he gets very familiar with this taxi driver. And the taxi driver and him have sex, gay sex, the gayest sex. And yeah. when they have sex, the gin is the top. And when he um, climaxes, the gin leaves the body of the person that he is that he is in and he moves into the other one. That okay. sense through his dick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get it. So when the guy when the businessman at the end of the story when the businessman gets up and leaves, the gin is now inside of that businessman. And he takes on the taxi driver position and gets into the cab and drive. And I'm just like. What happened to the taxi driver? I don't remember. I think he either the guy either left or he just or they kind of indicated that he might have left or disappeared. But they make it very apparent that the gen was using that body as like a vessel and he moved from one body to the other in that particular way and i'm like that's that's weird in like an interesting way because the show does the same thing but the show does this weird cgi moment where they're both having or the well, both men are having sex and they turn into like only these greek statues and you could see like the see-through where like the where you could see i'm trying to say it in such a pg way you can see the top penetrating the bottom and you can see his deck and you can see the meh, the climaxing and it's like this gold liquid dust that leaves one guy and goes to the other and they show the whole thing of how that process works and i'm like this is someone had to this animate that someone had to animate that someone took hours of their life to 3D animate those two bodies and that godlike jizz. <laughs> My yeah. God. Yeah, I was like, Neil, are you are you straight? <laughs> I You know, do, there's do, a reason why this show's on stars, because stars is where you get all uh -huh. the like, really raunchy shows. Oh, this like, this or, show, like, yeah, this show, porn. Yeah, this show has sex and violence and shit. So you almost kind of have to do it on like stars or um, Showtime or like Netflix or something. But there was a time. I think there was a time when HBO was that raunchy. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, the the show did not finish out the story. They got through three seasons and they kind of just ended it or got canceled. And I'm like, come on, finish out the story. Cause they ended off. If I remember, cause I didn't watch season three, but I kind of Johnny, my boyfriend was telling me where they cut off on season three. He got to Lake lakeside and they were doing that storyline where they ended okay. it. So, so they only got like halfway through the book with like the first three seasons. Technically granted, there's a lot of major changes and inclusions from the show to the book so, but main bullet points so, they got about halfway halfway through the book when they okay, did the so, end uh, of the show is it just one book that they split up into three seasons or is it all like um well it's one book american gods is just one book but they made three seasons yeah up. and it didn't and they didn't yeah. and they did not finish the whole story there was a good half of the story that they didn't get to tell because the show got canceled yeah. So it could have took the series could have gotten another two seasons before it ended. All for one book. There was a lot. There was a lot of stuff I didn't even go over. On how like the system of the new gods worked and shit. But that's not yeah. really one to hit the major bullet points. It's exactly what I did. <laughs> so um yeah, you guys can get the book and read it. Do yourself a favor and read it. I read the, I did an audio book, obviously, of it. And I did the 10th 
um, 10 year anniversary edition. And at the very end, uh, Neil, I think does the narration for it at the very end. He talks about how he did a part. He wrote in Jesus Christ into the story. Yeah. And he didn't quite, oh, yeah, wasn't there like, what? Yeah, wasn't there like, uh, there wasn't there like different versions of Jesus. Like there was like <laughs> black Jesus, Korean Jesus. Yes. So in the show, not really in the book, but in the show, um, I'm all in the book. They kind of mention Jesus, but they never show him in the show Easter because they visit Asara on Easter day and Easter day. Mm -hmm. When they walk up to her, to a little mansion or whatnot, you see a bunch of different versions of Jesus, Korean Jesus, Mexican Jesus, black Jesus, white Jesus, all these, this crowd of Jesuses because everyone has their own image of Jesus in their head. Yeah. And I'm like, that's interesting. I kind of like what they did there. But in the book, you never really see Jesus. Mm -hmm. But he talks about at the very end of the book. He's like, I, he did write a part with Jesus Christ in it. He just never really thought it fit well in the book. So he took it out. Um, let me see if I can find that particular part. Because I'm trying to remember. Because he read an excerpt of what that part was and i think it was with the when he was on the world tree for nine days um i think he had interaction not with just horus but also with jesus mm -hmm. i'm trying to see if i can find that oh yeah in the show speaking of jesus in the show they had an episode on episode i think it was like part of the first season where they show uh the mexican border yeah. And there's an undocumented uh Mexican man who was shot and killed at the border and it's they shot Jesus Christ. Oh god. They shot Mexican Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Yeah, it yeah, I remember that it was weird. He was trying to cross, he was killed by a border patrol after trying to cross into the United States border. Immediately after saving a man from drowning, Jesus gets shot through both his hands and falls to the ground where he where a tumbleweed rolls over his head, leaving him with a crown of thorn. Oh God. Right. <laughs> right. It's very brutal. <laughs> it's very brutal, by the way. I can't, I can't seem to find it, but he has an interaction with Jesus Christ as he, as Jesus kind of gives him, um, wisdom, a nice little talking to about wisdom and shit, and how the world works and everything. It's not really that, Big of it's not a big part of the story, which is why he didn't put it in because he didn't think it necessarily fit anywhere. Um, but if you listen to the audiobook for the 10th anniversary edition or get the book itself, I'll actually have it in at the very end. Um, but yeah, so that's more or less American Gods. Uh, as far as ratings go, if I were to rate this book, I mean. <sighs> A five out of five. A five out of five. The book is way better than the show. The book is way better than the show. Read the book. Read the book, then watch the show. But I will say the show's imagery, though, Chef's Kiss. It's so good. So, there's American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Nice. Yeah. See, it. It's funny how, like, it doesn't seem like a long book, but from what I can tell, it's a long book. And the That's fact that they were able to make, they were able to, like, spread it out across three seasons, even if they didn't actually finish the story. Yeah. It's impressive. It's kind of like what they did with The Hobbit, if you think about it. Yeah, they turned such a, I mean, and The really, Hobbit was a little book, was it not? Yeah, it was a little book. Yeah, it was a little book. They just added a lot of, like, extra characters, like like, extra shit that like didn't even happen in the book and stretched it out. And I mean, the movies came out great. I don't, I had no complaints. Um, but yeah, that was American gods. Thanks guys Yay. for listening in. And thanks guys for who are joining us on YouTube for watching and catch us next week. We will be reviewing the novelization of the original 1954 Godzilla. Yes. Yeah. And uh, until then, peace. Peace out. Bye.